Hello and welcome to another review. This was a uh, late uh, Christmas gift, really, really late. <laughs> uh, and these are um, metal. Right, uh, people know what uh, paper crafts are. It essentially, is you print out a model on paper and you cut it out and fold it. And well, these are metal crafts, you know, and they print it on metal and you pop them out and you fold it uh, and such. So uh, one of them is mine, and uh, one of them is my brother's, so I'm filming them before uh, you know, we assemble them. So there's this R2-D2 right here, it's on the Japanese, but you can see R2-D2. Uh, super detailed something ages 15 and up, recommended for... So I got the uh, pretty much it's pretty much the episode three style artwork with uh, CGI Yoda, and uh, the, you know these were bought in Hong Kong. So uh, I did remove this Hong Kong sticker from here, so you can you guys can see it inside. Uh, these things are expensive; they're like almost 200 Hong Kong, which comes to about 15 UK pounds or. Uh, 30 US dollars almost so yeah uh, so so you got this package that's cut over the uh, cut here on the line but you can actually open it without cutting the packaging uh, I, though I didn't mess up a little bit there oopsies and uh, as you can see you know you got the metal figures you got the display stand and what you do is put the instructions right here if I don't know if I zoom in is uh, you know, you can either fold the pegs down after they pu push them into the slot, or you can twist them with uh, pliers. Uh, really can't read anything else. So let's have a look at the Chinese thing instructions. If I can uh, see it, let's see. Well, either ring English for you guys. Warning: Not suitable for children under 36 months. More parts, choking hazard. The product quote toy or children children's product unquote. May contain small parts or balls. <laughs> small balls. Uh, remove dispose of all packaging, including poly bags, safely before giving to children. Be careful of the potential in entanglement hazard with neck hairs or fingers. I have to put comma in front of all fingers. If there are strings, wires, wheels, or rolling parts in the product, warning: Do not aim at eyes or face and do not shoot towards human body if the product consists of shooting function. Uh, this English is terrible. Draw attention to the hazard of the edges and points. Do not modify this product or any of the included components. Do not give this product to children under target age. Let children play under parental supervision. Please retain above information for further reference. So, please retain above information but please dispose of all packaging. Yeah, just rewrite the whole bloody thing. So, I'm gonna take the Yoda, no, the Yoda, the uh, R2D2 one out first. They're just white packaging right there. And you see here, you got the two metal sheets. That's why it's so expensive because it's metal. So, yeah. Uh, it's fairly easy to. Sort of snap them off the little grid thing. I'm not going to do that. So well, this is the base. You got the top of R2's unit and uh, I, I the body. I guess it's really confusing. Uh, no, well here's another part of the body and uh, yeah, it's very confusing until the instructions. So let's let's do that. Uh, first one, this one, uh, it almost looks like a sticker sheet. If one side is yellow and also the inside. And uh, it, it's all in Japanese, so yeah, it's gonna be kind of tough to. Uh, well, the good thing about these is, is as always, uh, all the parts are labeled in numbers. So if you just follow the instructions and read the numbers, you can ignore all the Japanese. Like so, so. Should be uh, clear now. It's only one sided. Uh, this, they should have printed this two sided to save on paper. But uh, this, yeah, these instructions are very soft paper, um, so it should be should be okay, I guess. As for uh, the Millennium Falcon, it's the other other set. So 
So here are the uh, metal sheets. Well, it's obvious what that part is, anyway. Uh, I guess I'll zoom in. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's the other way around, I guess. Hmm. That sort of matte surface. Very, uh, a lot of detail going on. It better do, it's bloody expensive. Jeez. And the, uh, the Falcon's instructions. If only there were, Engl there were English on the instructions as well, that would be really fun. Because it would be really bad English. Yep, uh, the Falcon comes with a stand as well. And the uh, instructions seem uh, just as complicated. So yeah, I'm gonna build these, uh, well my brother's gonna build the other one, but uh, I'll build the R2 and uh, come back for the second part of the review. Uh, first let's talk about R2-D2, I assembled this one and it was really, really difficult to be honest with you. Uh, the thing is, uh, well let's, let's talk about paper crafting. Paper crafting is good because it's sort of a cheap way to print out just anything and you can fold it and make a little figure or a little display uh, depending on your skill there's different skill levels of paper craft but overall like I said it's you know I can't spend for example say say uh, 50 pounds on that on a figure or a statue those cost even more like 100, 100 pounds and you know if I use paper I can print it out and I'll just make that right uh, and of course if I mess up I'll just print the bit I mess up and carry on so that's, that's how paper graph, paper graph is, but paper graph is really uh, messy because paper is really soft. So some people use cardboard, but then cardboard sometimes gets too hard. When you're trying to fold certain areas, it's too tough, too thick to fold. So, you know, a way around that is, is for the more detailed, smaller areas, you use normal paper, thinner paper, and when you uh, paper crafting thick, or bigger, more less detailed areas, you use cardboard, so you got a little balance on uh, the density of the thick, uh, thickness of the material. So what these people have done is they take the idea of paper graph and use a metal sheet to uh, do it. And the metal sheet, the good thing about metal sheet is, is that it's it's solid. You know, I'm not gonna. Uh, it's a lot harder for me to squish this model or to bend it in the wrong way. Like, I, I, so it'll last a lot longer than paper craft. Uh, the downside is is that metal is a lot more tough, and certain areas are to do. Uh, so when you're building this model, you really need some extra tools with you. One of the good idea to have is a screwdriver for certain tube areas. You can roll the metal over the tube and get a round effect. Uh, but big areas, if you don't have anything round lying around, the big areas like the main torso of R2D2, it's really hard to get it into a sort of a smooth round object. Uh, another downside of this figure is this, this display is uh, is it uses the peg system. You, you slot the put the peg, slot it into the slot, and then you bend the peg so it hooks in place. Some of these pegs are pegged outwards towards the outside of the model, so you're gonna notice them if you look closer. And one thing with metal is, if you bend metal in the in one direction and then you bend it back, it has a ten tendency to get quite brittle and easy to snap. Uh, R2-D2 has a lot of these sort of small sensitive areas and more detailed areas and um, there were two areas where I snapped it. Now, once you snapped the model, there's nothing you can do. Like, you can super glue it, but it's not the same. You've snapped it. With paper craft, you can print out an extra piece quite easily, but with the metal one, well, you, I can't exactly print metal. I'm gonna have to buy another pack just to get the extra part, and I'm not doing that. So yeah, there, there are a few areas on this model where it gets uh, the way area is too thin. Uh, overall, most all the folding parts, they've uh, the way they've pressed the metal is that they press the dent a line into the sheet so that it will, it can easily fold in a certain direction. Uh, I don't know why they didn't do that with all the folding areas because in one of the areas, a few of the areas, the places that I did snap, they decided to punch holes in it. Uh, take for example, you, you get a paper form and it's been it's, it's got these dotted lines on the paper form so you can tear the form easily, you can tear that part of the paper off easily because it's got little dotted lines on it because they punch tiny holes. They did that with this metal model. 
on some areas for some bizarre reasons, some joints, they just decide to do that. That's the pl those are the places I've snapped it because it's easy to snap. So uh, some areas in this model you cannot get wrong. You must bend it right the first try because if you try to bend it or rebend it or bend it back in a different direction, it will snap off. And uh, those are the areas of the areas of this model where that happened was uh, in the leg where you have the u shape thing going on. So uh, those are the downsides really. And uh, for the price you're paying for, yes, it's metal, so it's going to cost more. But for the price, nearly 200 Hong Kong dollars, it's a bit pricey for me. And personally, uh, I don't like statues too much. I mean, what are going to do with it? Uh, but you know, just look at the video and you look at the model. Uh, uh, the attitude does look okay, even though he's made of metal, it could easily just have been one of those paper sheets with metal printed on top of it to give the illusion that it's metal. Uh, yes, it means it wouldn't be as hard as this, but uh, it wouldn't be as pricey and uh, it wouldn't be as hard to fold certain areas. Uh, detailing on this, it's enough, but well, not too special. One advantage of being metal is that you can't scratch this and remove the uh, metal effect because it's, it looks like that underneath because this is some sort of stainless steel, so yeah. Uh, they remain. Another thing is a uh, warning because it is metal and after you pull all the bits out of the uh, base, the sharp bits left behind, so watch out for that. There are two or three spare pieces left. Uh, they're like the really tiny piece, like the two round tubes on, the, on his legs and the little uh, exhaust things inside the torso. Uh, those, those tiny bits, there's a few spare, so that's good. Uh, they pretty much filled up the entire space of the uh, base plate, so they didn't waste any area. So where they could fit a spare, they fit a spare in there. So that, that's nice of them to do that, because they didn't have to, but uh, I guess it gives us a second chance on certain parts, but the hard bits there are no spares. So uh, if you have really delicate hands, I'd say yay, go ahead and get one of these if you, if you like the look of these. If you can you know, get past the, the dome head where it looks like a lot of little floats like a flower. Um, me personally, uh, thanks my godmother's brother who bought me this. It's, it's, it's a nice gesture because we like Star Wars. He knows we like Star Wars. But uh, I, I would never buy these on my own because, like I said, I don't like statues and uh, I'd rather just have uh, R2-D2 action figure, which is sort of relatively the same scale as the Hasbro figures. Slightly bigger, but it's about the same. Uh, yeah, it's it's okay, but for the price, no way. I'd rather get another SH figure. It's way more playability there because what, I can't do anything with this now. I just, just display it. So uh, yeah, I'll see how my brother gets along with the uh, Millennium Falcon model. Uh, he's he's nowhere near as good as me in terms of models. So I hope that was easier. There's this less tiny detailed bits with more folds as the R2 one. So let's see how that goes.